Hi everyone, welcome back to Game MakerCast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, it's going to be a quick one, and I just want to show you an API that I'm using on a website. I'm bringing that information back into Game Maker Studio, and then I'm trans translating that information into something usable. So, for instance, we have this website called randomuser.me, and it will give us, you know, the name, gender, email, a picture of a user, and it's randomized every time. So this is the information we get back in GameMaker, and if I go to their documentation here, you can see that we get back some JSON data like this. So this might look a little scary, but actually once you get using it, it's actually pretty nice. So all we're going to be doing is sending a request to this URL here, and we're going to back, get back some JSON data, which then we just need to format. Sounds pretty easy, right? So let's dive right in by loading up an empty project here. And in this project, I just have my single object, which is just my object person. And if I go to my object person, I have the create event, which I have some variables here. The draw event for that's the name, the gender, the email, and the sprite. We have a global left and then an async HTTP, which we'll get to in one second. So right now, this really doesn't do anything and we need to call we need to send a request to that website. So you can see in the create event, we had an unused variable called request handle. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we can say the request handle is going to equal HTTP underscore get. And you can see that it accepts a URL. So all we want to do is send the URL of that specific API in there. And once we do that, anytime we left click in our game, it's going to send a request out to this API. Now what we have to do is handle that request. Anytime that we send out a request, it's gonna be handled in the async HTTP. You can find that underneath asynchronous and then there's HTTP down here. So pretend in our game we're sending out multiple API requests to get you know the random error. So we're getting the top 10 list, we're getting where the user scored, you know, the average. There's a bunch of different requests that we could be sending out. We need to know which requests we're actually going to be handling. And what GameMaker does is it has a special DS list called async load. And this is a global variable that basically has all of the information for any request that we send out. So all the information is going to be found in here. So how do we kind of translate that? Well, the first thing we need to do is I said, we need to make sure that we are handling the correct request. So when we left click, we set a request handle so we can check to see if this handle is going to equal what is inside here. So we can say if uh, DS map find value. So we're going to look within the async load and we're going to grab the ID. So if that ID equals the request, handle, which is the one we sent, then we know that we are dealing with this request here. So it's whatever you kind of name it here. So this could be the random user handle, who knows. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that it was successful. So the API call actually worked. So once again, we're going to use this bit of information here. So if the DS map find value, and we're looking at that special variable, if the key of status is equal to zero, then we know it was successful. Otherwise, we could have some sort of message to the user or just you know display something on the screen. Could not load a top 10 list or whatever. Now that we know that we are handling the specific request and we know that the status is good, we need to store that response. So we could say VAR response equals, and once again, we're gonna use this uh, specific map here. So we'll say DS map find value, and we're gonna look for the result. So if I were to just say console this out, just console is a script that I wrote here, and it's a short form of show debug message. So if I come back up and I run my game, and then I left click, you can see that down here, this is the information that we get. So we need to take this information and kind of format it in a different way so that we can use it. So in order to do that, what we have to do is take this response, which is a string, and we need to decode it into um, an object. So once again, GameMaker comes with a special function for us to do that. So we could say var person equals JSON decode. And you can see that it accepts a string. So we're going to throw in our response. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a DS map list. So if I just say console 
here because I want to run the debugger after that information comes. So I'll run my debug and once I click, we'll get switched back over. And you can see down here, we have person 14. If I view as a DS map and then I bring this in, you can see that now we have results and then the results has a single item here, but you can see that now we have that information. So we have random phone numbers, we have pictures, random emails, etc., etc. Okay, so I'm going to close my debugger because I don't need that. So now that I know that I have an actual DS map here, I can do some stuff with it. Now you saw that we actually had to go into results. So that means that anytime we have to go into something, we have to traverse down through the map. So basically I would have to create another DS map. So I could say DS or list equals DS map find value. And I want to look in this specific DS map here and I want to look for results. So now we're down one more level and you saw that we only had one record in there. So actually if I hit F6 and bring up the debug one more time and you can see we have person here view as. So what we're basically doing is we're in the person and now we're going to find the results, which is here. And then we know we need to go into one more, which is going to be zero. And then we can start grabbing some information. So just think anytime that we want to go into something, we're going to have to find it within the map and it's going to return another map. So what that means is you can see that we had, what do we have here? I think we had name, email, um, gender, and then picture. So the picture we would have to create another map for. The gender is we don't need to go any further than finding the first record here, but the name we would also have to create a, another map. So with that knowledge, let's see here, let's take our debug out. With that knowledge, knowledge, with that knowledge, let's grab the first record. So we'll say VR map equals DS um, list find value. And we want to find the list and the first one. Now, actually, the reason I'm doing a list here, I should have pointed that out. If I run debug one more time, and we get here and I view this as a DS map. You can see that the results here is actually a DS list. So it's not a DS map. So just be aware of that. You got to always look at your value types here. Okay. So closing that back. So in our map, we equals a DS list find value. So that's going to give us the first one. And now we can start grabbing those information. So in our create event, we had name, gender, email, and Sprite. And I know that the email and gender we don't have to go into, so we can set those. So we can say email equals DS map find value. And let's look within our map for the email. And we'll copy that. And I believe this is gender and we'll copy this in. So we're looking within the first record here. Now, like I said, if it's going to be going into another level down, we have to then go within that map. So again, we could say VAR, let's call this uh, name underscore map. So in this map, we will use another find value. I know this is kind of repetitive and stuff, but we're almost done here. So within this, now our name, so we have the first, was it first, last, and title or something like that. Basically what I want to do is I want to concatenate those two values together. I have a function here that just basically takes the arguments that I, that I send in and it just concatenates together them together in a single string. So I'm going to use that concatenate function. So I'm going to concatenate and let's use... Once again, this DS map find value. Now I'm going to look in the name underscore map for the first one. And then I want to have a space. And then for the name map, I want to look for the last name and the brackets. Okay, so the name is done. If we want to go in the picture, I'm not sure if you can remember, but there were th things like thumbnail, large, small, medium. So we are just going to duplicate this name map because we have to go in another level. And let's name this picture underscore map. And we're going to be looking in 
this map up here, which is our first item. And the name is Pitcher. And then we have a sprite. I'm going to take this out because we can say sprite. If I can spell add. And now we need to add that URL. So we're going to add that link to the thumbnail. So we want to look in our pitcher underscore map. And we want to look for the thumbnail. And then we can add the rest of our sprite information. So we don't have any animation. Um, let's remove the back. Let's make it smooth. And I'm not really sure, but I think the thumbnail, I think that is how big the thumbnail is in half. I can't remember if it's 48 by 48. We'll just take a guess. Okay. So I just realized that's really big. The only thing that we have to do, we're dealing with a lot of maps here. What we really need to do is we really need to clean this up or we're going to have memory leaks um, like crazy because we're creating maps and we're not destroying them or anything like that. So in here, we're going to have to start saying DS map destroy and let's see how many maps we have. One, two, three, um, four. So we have four maps. So let's put that in there. And then we also have a DS list and destroy so we have one list and four maps so make sure we destroy our picture map our name map and we need the map which is just a regular ds list or sorry ds map which is that one i guess those are kind of messed up so the list is named the map the map is named list and then finally the person yes the person eh, we should probably destroy that one too let's let's go ahead and you know what? if it gives us an error we know that we destroyed the wrong thing so let's hit a five let's see what we got here um let's left click and it looks like we got one so data structure with an object does not exist so we don't have that right thing there destroy list map so we are looking for something i'm just going to leave that out for now just so we don't uh don't carry on with that specific one. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um, we have let's take that one out and let's call it a day. Uh, we may have to take person out here. Let's see. No, it's fine. Okay, so you can see that now we are finally at the point where we are calling that API. We're getting that information in. We're getting random names, random sprites, uh, random gender, and email. So if you have you know um, an API out there that you want to call you can see that it's actually pretty easy to do with just this little bit of code as long as you understand that anytime you need to go into the uh, into the object you're going to have to find that specific one and create a map out of it so if we were to let's say f9 on this last one and we'll load this up one more time left click and we'll go to our debugger here so you can see that we have all these different uh, DS maps here. If I view this as a DS map, this is the picture. So there we have thumbnail, large, and medium. So that's how we get that information. In the name, DS map, we have last, title, and first. I can't remember where this is. So this is everything here. So this is all of the information for that person. And then we just separate them out and so on and so on i won't go into all of them that's something that you could definitely do but yeah you can see it was actually pretty easy and pretty cool so hopefully you've learned a thing or two and yeah i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot i would like to thank my patreon supporters ashby victor and paul thank you so much for the support and i'll see you guys next time